everyone. I'm Jenna. And I'm Steve. And welcome to another Field Trip Friday. What are we doing today, Steve? Well, today we're going to the museum where we're going to meet Dr. Chris Hazard, who's going to help us learn a little bit about machine learning and artificial intelligence. That sounds really cool. I don't know a lot about those things, so I'm excited to learn. Yeah, me too. Let's do it. Cool. Hey, Chris. Hey, Jenna. How's hey, it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm doing well. So can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what the work that I claim does? Sure, yeah, I'm Dr. Chris Hazard. Um, I work with artificial intelligence and machine learning, and we at Diveplane work on understandable machine learning and AI so that you understand why it did what it did. And we solve a lot of hard problems. And we basically, uh, you know, Steve and I were talking before, we make scientists in a box. That's one way to think about it. Yeah, Very such a cool idea, yeah, is, 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 you know, like we work as scientists, of course, in the world, but what if you could make that an automated process? What if you could make little robots that work as scientists? That's, that's a super cool concept. Right. And potentially really powerful, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, we, you, you have a laboratory and you brought it with you, is that right? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. <laughs> so here's my laboratory. I can take it with me very easily. Being a computer scientist of various forms allows you to you know, work remotely or, or work wherever you want, wherever your work takes you. Um, and you know, sometimes we need a lot of heavy computing, so we'll you know, connect to, through the internet to work with very large computers and data centers, but sometimes the work that I need to do is can run on this little thing right here. That's so cool. Yeah. That is really cool. So AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. So how are those things different? How do they relate to each other? Yeah, so um, there's, a, there's a big overlap between the terms. There's artificial intelligence, which means doing something smart, having a machine do something intelligent. It could be making a believable character in a video game, making a you know, difficult bad guy that is, makes challenging moves. It could be routing your, uh, you know, routing the traffic for an airline company. It could be you know, any sort of behavior that is intelligent. Now, machine learning is a piece of that and it's related. It is, uh, normally with, with, with programs when you want to make something intelligent, you have to put in all the logic. If this happens, then do this. You know, for these, do, do these different things. Well, sometimes you just want to teach it with data. You don't want to say, here's the exact instructions to follow. You want to say, hey, watch me do this four times and then do it yourself. And machine learning is about having a, uh, showing a computer to do something with data. Very cool. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, and so, so I think um, there, you all have uh, an example of this might be, um, there, you, you showed us a uh, drone simulation, and so you were kind of teaching an intelligence to, to, to use the controls uh, that, that a pilot might use for, for piloting a simulated drone, is that right? Yeah, yeah, if you ever uh, played with uh, drones, you know, sometimes they're, they're very finicky to control. You fly it and it, oh, I almost crashed it, sorry. You know, <laughs> it, and your friend will never let you touch their, their drone again. Yeah. But, um, so uh, teaching a drone to fly indoor, outdoor, navigating around obstacles and say, well, I want it to move here, then here, then here, and give it that information. Uh, you know, how do you teach it to fly on its own and, and navigate it and perform the types of uh, maneuvers that you'd like it to do? So one of the things that, that we built at Diaplane in our very early days was being able to teach a drone to fly, teach the, build a model that can learn to fly a drone navigating waypoint to waypoint and um, you know, perform those maneuvers based on your training. And also, if you make a mistake, you can, uh, or, or let's say the AI makes a mistake, you can say, well, that wasn't right, take it back and correct it. Right, like if it were to, I, I think you showed me it was like flying into the stairs because that's where the next point was, it was through the stairs. Right. And it didn't realize yet that it couldn't just fly through the stairs. It had to learn not to do that. Right, and it, it bounced in, and that's why we ran it in a simulator first before the real world. Right. And then we teach it to fly around. But let's say we teach it to fly around the stairs. We have to measure, did it learn to fly around those stairs specifically, or did it learn how to fly around stairs in general? And that's one of the, the challenging aspects of machine learning is making sure it generalizes in the way that you want it to, to all the different types of domains. Right, like when I, when I approach a, a stairwell, I can kind of, even if it has carpet, or even if it's a metal stairwell, or even if it's concrete steps, I still know how to kind of like approach that with my feet. But when I was a child, I'm sure I fell down. In fact, I remember falling down like carpeted stairs because they were slippery or whatever on my socks and things. And I had to learn, like, oh, I need to be careful with this particular step style if I'm going to step down them without falling down. Yeah. yeah. And, and just like machines, uh, or just like, like us, machines can make mistakes in weird ways. Like if you see an optic, optical illusion and you say, oh, well, that's real stairs. Oh, no, that's not stairs. And if you've seen something clever like that, machines can be fooled in similar but different ways. You can have a pattern that looks nothing like stairs, but to the way that the machine was trained, it might look like stairs to mm. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. So um, I think we have an example that we developed um, kind of to try and pull apart some of these ideas with an animal care example of kind of feeding some of the animals in the farmyard and especially lightning. Uh, maybe let's break down some of those problems. How would you even approach this concept? Yeah. So data scientists like to think about this in terms of what we call features. Now features are things that you can measure or reason about. They're different variables that you can measure, variables that you can control or outcomes. You know, sometimes we'll call those targets when we're trying to predict something. So you got to figure out what are we really looking at? Um, you mentioned behavior, so that might, that's definitely one of them. Behavior could be some sort of a feature, but what all entails, what all goes into behavior? Is it, you know, does he lay down? Does he stand up? Is he energetic? What, tell me about what, what sort of behavior things you usually measure. Yeah, yeah, so I, I think um, in terms of behavior, we can we can look at yeah, how active he is, we mm -hmm. can look at whether he's laid down a lot, we can look at the postures that he's in. Um, yeah, so so mm -hmm. I guess when we talk about, I, I've, heard, I've heard that word variable, uh, I mean, as, as a scientist, I've, I've used that a lot, and, and I guess for our audience, I just want to make sure you all know that's basically just something we can measure. It's something that we can, we can write down. And so like Chris has here, he's written down the types of behaviors. These are the things that we can say. Is he active? Uh, what posture is he in? We can define a set of postures. So now the other thing we want to measure is the, 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 the variable we want to experiment on, which is the food, right? So we have things that we feed him. Is there some sort of a schedule? Um, is there a new food we're introducing? So these are the sort of things that we would want to enumerate and transform them into features that we can also measure. Now as a scientist, you might say, well, okay, what are the types of food that, that Lightning eats? And you mentioned there's browse, which is a collection of whatever's available. There is, um, uh, there, there's chow, there's hay, there's, there's uh, carrots, etc. And we as people, we know exactly what those are. But we might not want to teach the computer what those are because it's not, it's outside of the purposes of this experiment and the, the data we would like to collect. Right. So one way we can we can communicate with the computer with about these concepts is we can enumerate them or encode them. So let's say that we have, um, you mentioned uh, well, there's, there's hay and, and what was the other one? Uh, donkey chow. Chow. Hay and chow are his like primary foods. He, he eats those every single day. So we have chow and hay, and maybe those are those are um, you know one and two. So we say chow is one, hay is two, and what, what are some other foods? Uh, yeah, go ahead, John. Browse. Yep. Browse. Browse. And then there was the special food. The sweet special. Yep. Carrots, yep. carrots and sweet potatoes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And was fried potatoes. Okay, so great. So now we can communicate to the, to the machine with number one, number two, number three, number four. And then when we, the machine tells us something, it makes a prediction, it might say, you know, you should feed him more of number four now, or more carrots to, to incentivize him. And then we can decode it back into carrots without having to teach the machine what carrots are. Cool. So now that we've broken down our problem into this kind of concept of variables that we, there, are, there are things that we can measure, and we're, we're going to get all this data, what are some of the other things that you would, you would coach us on to, to consider in our in our kind of problem set up here. So to answer this question, sometimes we'll transform the data in ways. Sometimes we'll call it uh, transforming into what's known as a stationary process. Think about stationary where you're standing in one place, you're not moving, you're not going through time, you're just saying, what's around me? And that's a way we can simplify the data for the machine learning algorithm so that it can learn it better, just like we talked about before, simplifying and learning one thing at a time. Right. And uh, in this case, we might say, well, let's look at what we'll call the time lag. So if he eats apples, or eats, eats a lot of apples, how long does it take for that weight to show up? Is it immediate? Is it a little bit longer? And how, what's the time lag with the behavior? If you feed him apples, is he really excited going up to the apples? Or is it he's energetic afterward? How, you know, and what are, how do those interplay with, with one another? And by looking at the data and looking at it across time, we can, uh, you know, we can assess both the correlations, you know, when things are related, but also what might cause one another. Right, and so I think you, you showed us an example uh, of, that kind of relates to this concept with uh, Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, so taking a look at this, this uh, Mario Brothers video, you can see that this is an artificial intelligence algorithm that is planning the path for Mario to jump and avoid obstacles. And you see the red line there, that is showing where the, the AI is planning. Now this is a technique called Monte Carlo Tree Search, big complicated term, but it's a pretty simple algorithm is searching the path. What is the best way for Mario to reach the end? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you can use machine learning with this, you can use uh, artificial intelligence, and there, there's a you know, sort of oftentimes a mixture of techniques for 
these types of problems. Oh, that's cool. And, uh, and so it, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like, I mean, I'm essentially playing that game. When I, when I do that, I'm trying to optimize my path through that. And, and so you to, to automate that, again, coming back to this, like we're kind of making little robot scientists, like little robots that are doing that work, the work of a game player, for example. That's, that's really cool. And it's also becoming super apparent to me that there's, there's a lot, there's so many questions that we can look at, there's so many pieces that we can break down. There was another piece that you had mentioned to this, to this um, that, that's important for us to consider. Yes, there's, there's exploration versus exploitation, ah, as we cool. call it. So as you see, you know, when, when Mario is, is trying to evade things, the system might have knowledge that, oh, this is a, you know, this is a pipe, I can go down the pipe. Um, and I know that this is something I can do. We call that exploiting the knowledge. Mm -hmm. so, again, terms that are pretty common in artificial intelligence. But if I see a new obstacle that I've never seen before, you know, maybe it's a set of st ascending stairs, or maybe it's a platform that falls, I have to explore it. I have to land on it and see what happens. Right. right. And so for that kind of exploration, for the like exploring the space, that's where we start to kind of collect the information, right? That's where we start to collect the data. And I think I remember you telling me earlier about, um, we, we were discussing this kind of example of connecting the dots in, in this yeah. kind of concept where we start to build patterns. Do, do you think we, we could talk a little bit about, about sure. that? Sure. So fundamentally, machine learning sounds like this very complex topic. And it's complex, but fundamentally, it boils down to one thing, and that's connecting the dots. Right. It is, uh, you know, we, we have this data, and what patterns emerge from it? How do we, how do we draw that? So yeah, so if you have a, a few dots, and I'm sure we've all seen or played Connect the Dots before, and they're numbered, and we want to draw a line that connects them, we just draw the line. Um, but let's say we've got four number ones, and they might be scattered about a little bit. We have uh, some number twos, some number threes. How do you connect a, a line across those different groups of data? And what is the best line that accurately describes, the, or most accurately describes the data? And that's what machine learning is all about, is fitting those lines. Mm. So, Chris, we've talked a lot about a thing, a lot of things kind of like in the abstract stuff. So back to our lightning issue, how can we kind of extrapolate or understand data from all of what we talked about with lightning? Like we were talking about ones and twos and threes and dots. How would all these relate to the things that we talked about with lightning's diet? Yeah, so we'll look at his behavior, we'll look at the frequency of feeding the food and the type of food, and we'll, we'll connect the dots. We'll find out that, oh, if we feed him this new, this new tomato or feed him watermelon this amount, here's the effect it will have on him and connect the dots and say, feeding him this much will yield this much gain in weight or this much gain in happiness and make those sorts of trade-offs. And so all those number plots uh, can just be real-world pieces of data Yeah, that, that, that speak to his, uh, again, there might be some outliers. There might right. be that this one day he just wasn't feeling good. Right. right. And um, it'll take that into account and cluster them appropriately. Right. So that's really cool. So I was thinking of the dots as, you know, like uh, chow, hay, watermelon, and stuff like that. And all of that is measured upon, you know, how he's reacting to that food. But that line that the machine draws, right, is, is that measurement, is understanding you can follow this pattern of all of the different foods that we fed lightning and then understand, okay, I see, like you said, we feed him this, this, and this, he's gonna have this kind of experience over time. Right, we wanna maximize and make lightning as, as happy and, and great as we can. Totally, thank you, Chris, so much for explaining all of this stuff. I learned a lot today, especially about AI and machine learning. Yeah, this is such a wild concept, and of course we hear a lot about it in, in kind of pop culture, you know, we hear about AIs, and, you know, like the you know, kind of robot taking over the world and stuff, but, but really the approaches are, uh, first of all, both complex but also simpler than those concepts, and, and really different, and, and the applications uh, that, that we actually see in the world are, are, are really cool and really, really scientific and really about a scientific approach to, to interpreting the universe, and that was so cool to, to learn more about that. Thank you so much. Sure, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And make sure you, for you all stay tuned for our live Q&A with Chris. Yeah, we're going to get to ask him all sorts of cool questions about all the stuff that we learned. So I can't wait to hear your questions. Stay tuned. Thanks.